And now, Autolite and its 98,000 dealers everywhere present Suspense. Check the upstairs room. Use these lists and check carefully. They must be fully furnished, completely equipped, exactly as those lists state. Mr. Vance? Mr. Vance! Let's snap too. We haven't much time. Our father will be here. Height six feet two. Smoking jacket. Trousers. Slippers. Got it? Yes, sir. Mother here. The mother here. Dress, stockings, about 5'5". Five, five. Got it? Yes, sir. You're the electrician? Yeah. You got a 110, a 220 outlet, is that right? Yeah, it's a heavy duty stuff. Just like in a regular house. Okay, then. Now, you got the mother spotted? Yes, sir. Now, did I have those people here this morning, as I told you? They'll be here by midnight, sir, I promise you. Uh, I had a little difficulty yeah, yeah, when yeah. I tried... Now, this window gets closed. Normally, all west windows will be closed at that hour. Remember that when you pull out. Yep. Mr. Vance, one child in the west bedroom, one adult in the small room at the head of the stairs. You got that? Uh, yes, sir. I've got it written right down here. Well, don't forget it. And in the future, when you work for the Army and they order people in designated spots at designated hours, get them there. Father, mother, child. Six foot two, mother's stockings, west window closed. Ah, oh, you'd think a duchess was going to was going to spend the weekend here with the duke. How careful can you get? Even dummies yet, and not just any place. Mother here, father there, and for what? Four a.m. They're going to drop an A bomb, and there won't be nothing left anyhow. It's kind of creepy, ain't it? Looks like a house, first like a house. But it ain't a house. Well, four in the morning. Ground zero. Oh, dear. Well, I, I've got so much to do yet, and I, I haven't eaten... I waited supper as long as I could. It got cold. Lovely dinner I had. Cold roast. The cold potatoes were particularly... George. George! Oh, dear, really, I've had a very miserable day. The colonel had me on the carpet all afternoon. I didn't have all the mannequins quite done, and, and he was quite anxious Isn't that Isn't that I... just too bad? Did you tell him you had a wife in the house, a wife that gets precious little attention as it is? I promised him you that You promised I... me, too.
Ten years ago, you promised me we'd have a wonderful life together. Wonderful life. That's a yak. The first year, it was the puppets. Yeah, the puppets. The wonderful little marionettes. Yeah. The wonderful little marionettes. They kept us starving for two years. Crazy, stupid... <laughs> and when I got out of that, where did you go? Your great big success, you? Helen, I, I really have Ten to finish this. figurines, wasn't it? Yeah, my artist over here. My successful artist husband. And then where? A hot desert town with atom bombs exploding every few weeks that scare me to death. Oh, yes, it's been a fine life, George. Rich, full, exciting. George, listen to me. Helen. What's the matter with you, George? Why can't you find a job that means something? Helen, you know this is all I can do. Dummies. Plaster Paris dummies. And you putter over them as if they were flesh and blood. Helen, when you create a human figure, it, it takes on a sort of life to you. Well, let it take on a bank account. George, do you forget you have a wife? Are these the only things that mean anything to you? Helen. Sometimes I think I'm married to one of them. George Vance, king of the dummies. And here's his girlfriend. Great dummy. Helen, leave her alone. Her. It's it, not her. You can paint a smile on a dead face, but that doesn't make it alive. That doesn't make it breathe. George. Helen, it's just an airplane. It's a test, another bomb. It's it? a plane, Helen. The test won't be until early tomorrow morning. That's why I have to finish this. It is a test, isn't it? Oh, Helen, I told you. You no. tell me, you tell me, what can I believe? You're so wrapped up in those dummies, you don't care that I'm scared to death. Well, I'm glad they're going to drop a bomb on them. I wish I could see it happen. I wish I could be outside the window and watch them explode and rip apart. Helen. Helen. Why are you like this? You make me this way. I'll keep right on being this way until you do something worthwhile. Until you stop puttering around with figures and puppets and dummies. I'm going to keep after you, George, and scream some sense into you, understand? I'm going to scream some sense into you if it takes the rest of my life. with you tonight. I can't stay in this house now with the bomb going off. I'll go with you. You want to go with me to the house? But you hate doing that. Why, it frightens you even when we pass through the gate. I'll take my prescription. I'll go along with you and sleep in the truck. I'll take three pills. You know how I am when I take three pills? Why, an earthquake couldn't wake me up. Helen, I'm going with you. you. I'll take some pills. Why does she hate you so? Dummies, plaster of Paris, but gentle, kind, and quiet. Helen, if only you were that way. You fool. That's where I'll check it. Post number one said there's a civvy car heading out this way. Official business. Well, official or no, he'd better hurry. Father here. Father here. The child here. I'll keep asking. 
You pass, my friend. Yeah. And what do you got back there? They're the people, the people for the house. Oh, the people. You mean the dummies. <laughs> well, I don't envy them, that's for sure. That's for a doggone sure. Okay, but don't stop any place for anything. You got 35 miles to go and it's 11.30 already. Mr. You're in a restricted area now. Yes, I I'm bringing the people, the dummies, into the target. Okay, but make it snappy. We have to clear this area by 0100. That's a little over an hour from now. Dummies, Lance, that's your name? That's right. You know where they go? Yes. Okay, bring them on in. I'll bring the rest of the family right in. with the dummies, huh? Yeah. Well, take a good look. Ain't gonna look like this tomorrow. Ain't gonna be nothing left but the memory. in that jeep, did you say? About a half hour, then the colonel's gonna inspect. Well, it's none too soon for me. You better make a final check. Turn on that radio. men? All five. <laughs> you better kiss them goodbye. I did. Because after the colonel finishes his inspection, you ain't gonna see them anymore. I know. Second act of Nightmare at Ground Zero, starring O.Z. Whitehead. It's all right. Looks fine. Well, old girl, this is it. 
Now, tomorrow you'll be just so much dust. Dangerous dust at that. Radio projector, you know. Now, let's look at the other rooms. There's really no need. I, I put them in all the right rooms. One in bed, one by set of dressing table. That's right, just as was ordered. Well, we'll take a look anyway. Uh, uh, there's really no need. There's no need. Now they're upstairs. I wish I'd hurry up and get this inspection over with. It's all right, it gives me the shakes hanging around like this. Only two more hours to go. Come on, will you? Let's leave the place to the dummies. That's right. Pretty up, miss. There won't be much left to pretty up in a few hours. Don't say that. Well, now let's check the other bed. Th there's really no need. Vance! Don't mention of any blankets on any of these dummies. Oh. Yes, excuse me, sir. You want on the field phone. All right. Now, Vance, remove that blanket. I'm going to do. I'm going home and pack. And I'm going back east. And I, I'm going to start working with the marionettes again. Just like before. Goodbye, Helen. You won't feel a thing, Helen. They tell me it's so quick that September night, the eyes of millions of Americans, as well as people all over the world, turn toward Yucca Flats in Nevada, and a small frame house that is doomed to die. At four in the morning, Rocky Mountain time, the test house for the latest in the atomic blast will be turned into an inferno, and then nothingness, as an army bomber unloads the bomb directly over it. Its occupants? A handful of mannequins set strategically in its various rooms. Mannequins who are playing a part, they're playing our part, yours and mine. What happens to them at four in the morning is probably what would happen to us in case of an atomic attack. To us, our families, our loved ones. Helen. Helen. <laughs> That's headquarters. What? Are you kidding, sir? It's 3 a.m. That area is strictly off limits. They're going to blow up a... I can't help it. No one's allowed within 30 miles of that house. No. I'm sorry. No, Mr. Vance. I can't suggest a thing. Outpost. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, I'll watch for it. But don't worry. Nobody will get by. That's right. Wait a minute. Hey, who was that? Well, he had a pass. Said he was Joan going just about a mile up the road. The guy in the car? Yeah, the guy with the dummies. That two lady just went by, yeah. Well, now, look, how are we supposed to? Yeah, yeah, all right. Hey, what's up? My blood pressure. You know where that guy's headed for? Yeah, about a mile up the road. He said he lost something out of the car. In mine, that's what he lost. He's headed for the house. The house? They're sending a the car out to try to stop him. Ten to three. Now, if they don't get to him, there's going to be five dummies and one honorary dummy all blown to...
We've got to get out of here. It's past 3.30 already. Oh, I must look a mess. I'll Not now, Helen. We've got to get out of here. Why, George, this is... Yes. You're in the house. In the house at ground zero. You want to yell at me now, Helen? You want to scream and argue? You put me here. Yes, I put you here. Your loving husband, George. I put you here to die. Why, George? Why? There's no time. Come on, Helen. Next week, our story will be Death in the Pasig River, starring English stage and motion picture star Sir Cedric Hardwick. Death in the Pasig River, another story well calculated to keep you in suspense. Thank you.